Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we are back to module 4, module 5, lecture 4. So in the previous 3 modules of prefabricated con concrete construction, we had tried to cover the after the introductory lecture, then we move to the precast items which we usually use in developing countries. We had in the first lecture discussed how why we cannot adapt it so rapidly like other developed countries and in the lecture 3 we had extensively discussed on the wall panel system where we had understood that these are very intensive mechanized system with lot of precision to be placed in position one after other and it is facing expansion so there should be proper sealing where it can actually take in some kind of there is a cushion which is possible through the sealing system and we could design. Now we come to the floor panel part. Now when we are coming to the floor panel part we have to remember that these floor panels does not require any joining as such which will be which has to be watertight which was required for the wall panel system the masonry units or the aerated concrete units whichever now coming to the floor panel system we have coming to the floor panel system which is today's discussion we see we have a system for the small spans we have another set of system for the long spans and this long span will also include the combined floor panel where beam and slab it is together coming as a composite and also we need to know the assembling system which I was referring to in case of wall panel or in case of the units which are quite larger in size as compared to the brick the building units they are set with mortars. The wall panels are set with sealants. So here also we need to know what should be the assembling system when we are setting these panels one after the other. Now coming to the small span system this is adapted in our country context as you see a section of a small panel which is made of concrete with reinforcement is inside it which is a thin section compared to that of a cast in situ concrete floor. You can see the cross section here. So if you cut a section through AA you will see that the section is something like this where the thickness you can find as 60 millimeter 60 millimeter which is smaller than that of a cast in situ system and you see the reinforcement bars are inside it when it is fabricated. Now what are these gaps doing? These gaps, these gaps here as you can see they can actually pull the system help taking the system to the place where it needs to be assembled and if you look into the dimension it is something around 5 feet that is 1500 and on the other side it is only 1 feet. So you can understand that this is humanly possible to be shifted to the place where it is to be placed. So if you have such a small system and one after the other can be repeated then you can create a floor where you can 
actually give load. So, you can see this section on the transverse side. Similarly, what you see on the other side, you see the longitudinal section. Now, here you will see find that there is a detail when one section comes and is placed after the other there should be some supporting member it may be a wall it may be a beam so if it is a beam you will see the beam is raised in position with a reinforcement bar coming out so when this this is again a precast beam precast beam where a reinforcement rod has been taken out. Why is it so? One is to it is helping to lift the beam to position and as you had seen as you had seen that there is a rod inside it. So, a rod through and through passes through it to lift it, lift the beam entirely to the support system around it. I will come to that in the next slide. So, once this system beam is in position, you can actually lift individual units and place it one after the other. So, let us see it here. Here you see if it is a small room of say 3 meters by 3 meters and your so if it is a internally it is from here to here it is 3 meters by 3 meters 3 meters cross 3 meters then actually you can place 1 2 3 4 units in this direction. 300 each and 1500 long where this is the supporting beam. So, this supporting beam rests between the two walls and the cross it is the floor slab which is resting on one side on the wall, wall groove on the other side on the wall groove and the other end resting on the beam as you had seen in the previous slide. So, once this is done, you can now find out that this is how the section looks. So, you can see this is the transverse section as you can check. This is the transverse section edge of each of the slab. What is happening? For lifting purpose, you had used this you had made this notch and there you are now filling some weak mortar to bring the entire floor in one particular level. So, you are putting some mortar, you are filling some mortar and bringing it, completing it or making it at one level so that it can be used as a floor. As if you Remember, I had <coughs> I had shown you an image. So, this was from a model, this picture was taken from a model developed by BMTPC building material technology promotion center. Those who have developed for our low cost housings, it is a fast mechanism. You can create three, you, 3 meter by 3 meter rooms one adjacent to the other and you can make the roofing very quickly even if the support is a brick wall. So, now here in this image you can see the mortar is being filled and the gaps are completed. What happens in case of the roof? In case of roof 
water may enter through the gaps narrow gaps here and there so a bitumen layer or an epdm sheet particularly used for damp proofing may be inserted on the roof level so once that is done the moisture entry or water entry can be controlled so this is extensively being used here you must remember in a developing country like ours we can use this system for low cost housing small span structures but on the other end if we look into large constructions industrial constructions factories there the span is not so small like 3.6 meters or say 3 meters where we can adopt such small span system here we need to think how we need to cover longer larger spans now these again are made of concrete as i had told you in my introductory lecture most of these units are concrete made of concrete with reinforcement as they are taking tension there should be reinforcement inside to take the con take the tension member take the tens tensile load so they are again made of early strength gain cement that is quick setting cement low slump concrete these terms you know low slump concrete means it is stiff concrete less of water in it steam curing for 24 hours these are all factory made pre tensioned steel wires can be used for larger higher efficiency larger spans etc so pre tensioned is the wires or the reinforcement is ten, is put under tension before the casting is done so they can take higher amount of load tensile strength now under this long span we have two types one is the slab only and other is combined or composite of slab and beam together so coming to the slab which is itself stand alone slab they are again of two types flat slab hollow slab hollow core so flat slab is 100% concrete with reinforcement inside it hollow slab is having cores spreaded along the entire where it is reducing the weight at the same time going for larger spans now you see how how it is represented fs fs is fs is flat slab f stands for flat and slab s l a b slab of which again you see 4 is the 4 feet of its width so if you go by code you will find f s 4 that means it is 4 feet width flat slab so it will not have any hollow core inside it it is solid slab length can be as large as 25 feet so you can now understand that we were talking of small spans which was referring to something around 5 feet and now it is we can see the system is itself taking 25 feet in one go coming to the hollow core it is represented by 4 hc6 where actually 4 refers to the width 4 refers to the width and 6 refers to the 6 inches in depth so when if you are referring to such code you must remember that in flat slab it is ending with its width whereas the hollow core slabs are beginning with its width 
and ending with its depth. So these are now available up to length of 40 feet and can vary up to a thickness of 200 millimeter. How are these coats made? You can have pipes inside very close set in the mold and then the casting is made. So it is a continuously cast in the, in the industry and they are made hollow. Now these hollow can have another advantage can be the carrier of various service lines. So some service lines may pass through these hollow coats. Next coming to the combined beam column. These are having the beam associated with it. So this is similar to flat slab with ribs. So these ribs act as the beam and they may be they are usually looking like the figure T. So these will have large flanges or projections which will act as slab one after the other and these T's these ribs will act as the beam. Now there are different types double T, single T and waffle slab where T is on both the directions and it becomes a, becomes a waffle like structure. So we will come to each of them one by one. These are sections through the solid core that is flat slab and the hollow core flat slab, hollow core slab. Now what you can see here similar to the small spans here also there are grooves to, to have anchorage and they are also helping in setting the concrete or mortar which will be added later to make it a single surface. So here also you can see such grooves. You can see the reinforcement bars which are shown by black dots. So they are all designed accordingly and are placed. So after assembling the gaps are filled with mortar after placing the units in position. This allows services through pa pass through these hol holes or sometimes the services are embedded in these gaps also. So whenever two such members are sitting one after the other you can actually have the service lines passing through on top of which you can actually pour in actually pour in the concrete. So let us see how it looks when it is made in factory. So this is a picture collected from the shutterstock. You can see this is made in factory how they are separated and kept in position. They are to be carried to the site and each of them you can understand it is a huge length. Here you see another picture where you can see these grooves within the within the top part or the face which help in lifting these in position. Now you can see the grooves in the side 
for better anchorage of the motor and these are lifted at both ends by means of a crane and kept in position and kept over beams below. We will come to that later. So, they are not resting on brick walls what which we had seen in case of a small span floor slab. Here we are seeing it is sitting on a precast beam which is already in position. Now let us come to the combined kind of floor slab. What we see here it is a double T as I was telling. This is a single T you see with the double T the rib size depth has gone down. Here it is a larger single T is having a larger rib. So, that is the web that is the flange and it is around 8 to 10 feet wide. Now, these can sit over a system in the way it is shown here. There may be special notches at the end of the T. There may be special notches in the web to get into a walling system. So, this is the continuous T which needs to which needs to get assembled in a walling system where this will exactly go and match with the wall system. So, one has to be very careful while these are being placed. These are all to be set within its groove if the drawing is perfectly done. So, every instruction should be there when it is being fabricated, when it is being made and when you are coming to site it is only the job of assembling it in order where the way it was actually placed. So, these webs or ribs of the floor plans rests in appropriate slots which are kept in the wall panel. Ribs have setbacks to get fixed in the wall. Thickness of the flange and the web depends on how big the span is and are specified in code. Even the reinforcement di dimensions are specified in code. So, we as architects, we need to know the system, how it needs to get into place and then accordingly we have to design for the say the industrial structure or say a large scale large span office structure, office space which will use these panels. So, we need to get prepared knowing these systems instead of only knowing the conventional methods. So, we when we are plunging into the prefabricated world, we have to follow specific rules, specific nomenclatures, we have to know the codes, what is the specification and we just cannot make a wishful dimension. We have to look into how much, how big these can go up to and what is my requirement and which is the closest in dimension and we have to design accordingly. So, after looking into the different types of uh, different types of floor panels both short span or small span as well as long span, let us try to also see the other one which is the waffle slab. These are also meant for long spans where you see it is one slab, it is not a flat slab neither a T slab, neither a combined one, rather a combination of both. So, these can go for large spans, but they can take in tension in both the directions. So, they have ribs in both the directions and they have much better stability. They can be managed with much thin cross section. Here you see around 50 millimeter of slab, 
thickness you can actually achieve here is here is the 50 millimeter slab thickness and you can have the ribs or the webs of much lesser dimension so charts are there accordingly the mold is now getting complex complicated the reinforcement system inside it is also getting complicated which was not that much difficult in that in case of the others so if such kind of slab is also adapted you can go for such kind of slabs for long span let us now go to how these are to be assembled precast beams and precast girders so we use the girders when it is a large span we can use these precast beams which we were talking about when we were also doing the small spans here these are to be of the length between the support system so here you can see this may be huge long rectangular beam or it may be at the edge it may be l shaped beam now this l shaped is having the projection where you can actually rest the slab so you can understand that there should be this dimension should be matching with the thickness of the thickness of the slab now in the case of the short span you had seen the reinforcement is projecting out here also you see the reinforcements are projecting out in all the cases what are they doing when the slab is placed when the slab is placed here at the end these are to be locked these are to be sealed so this area again another slab will come on the other side so these are to be sealed with mortar and a same level will be reached and the load sharing will take place if it is a rectangular beam you see it is rb 16 inch refers to the width 24 inch refers to the depth so there should be 16 inch 24 inch similarly you have l refers to the l shaped beam it refers to the inverted t beam so same way these charts are to be followed to get specific dimension for the particular thickness of slab now this slab may be a flat slab this slab may be a hollow core slab so depending on what the what the specification is what is mentioned the items are to be chosen the depths and dimensions are to be chosen so these projected reinforcements help them to place in position at the same time they help to make it an unified structure when the mortar is put on the as the final layer now coming to the beam column slab connection here when we are setting these column setting these flats these slabs hollow core slabs or the flat slab you see we were placing it on top of these rectangular beam say or l shaped beam so on rectangular beam you can see how it is set it is set on two sides of the reinforcement so this is the reinforcement and you are setting your member hollow slab here on the other side hollow slab there so the reinforcement is in between and when you are coating it with the concrete some concrete is getting concrete is getting filled here and the top is getting a fine layer 
here you see the beam has been welded to the column. What did we see when we were looking into the wall panel system? They were set one after the other with dowels one inserted within the other on the vertical direction. On the horizontal direction there were space, there were gaps where sealants were pushed into. There were backer rods to absorb the expansion if any, but here the load has to be transferred through the beam into the column. So, that is why the beam cannot be unstable. It has to be set finely, rightly with the column. So, the beam you may sit, you may check it is sitting on the bearing pad which is a projection in the column. That has also to be designed so that this projection is always left on that particular position. The beam is resting on it, further the beam is having welded connection with the column, making it a very strong joint. Thus, whatever load some 30 feet, 25 feet, 40 feet, entire load is being borne by this and is transferred through the column to the foundation. If that is not done, the structure or the system will crumble. In case of cast in situ system, we do not have such options. There beam column slab are all together cast in one day and then it is left for curing. So, there is a continuity between the entire structure, it becomes monolithic. Here that is not possible because you are assembling or integrating piece by piece. So, this has to be kept in mind. So, these bearing pads, steel angles, metal plates all are to be there to take the load of the precast slab and finally, once everything is done, you are laying the concrete fill on top to give it a very neat finish which one cannot identify even what is the system below it. So, we may conclude that depending on the span, the type of the flooring system has to be selected. Beam and column should be placed, should be in place to receive the flooring member. So, you just cannot start placing the floors without, without your beam column system in position. Beam column system may be precast, it may be steel section, it may be brick wall, it may be anything other than precast system also. Floor slabs are to be accommodated in the walling system also if it is a combined system. If it is not a combined system, it may be lying independently on the, on the structural system and then the walling may be done with even brick wall or concrete masonry units or aerated, uh, aerated autoclaved concrete blocks. So, with these we finish this lecture 4. Thank you.